All right, we're back, Thad and Jason from Sheffield Metals. Let's look at the sidewall detail. This is SW3 on the Sheffield installation manuals if you're following along. Again, over plywood, uh, deck substrate. Jason, let's uh, talk about the game plan and then go put it on our model roof deck here. Okay, so once again, uh, we're gonna make sure the deck is clean and ready for installation. Uh, we're gonna install the underlayment. And the, the biggest thing about this detail with the underlayment is it must turn up the wall a minimum of three inches. Then we, when we install the panels, the panels also need to be field bent 90 degrees to match the Z closure height against the wall. So that height will be dependent upon what panel profile you are installing. After that, the Z closure is installed again over 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape and attached at four inches on center with a 10 by one pancake head fastener. Okay, then the uh, sidewall flashing will be installed. Uh, we're putting the 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape on the back side of the vertical leg of the sidewall flashing. So against uh, your wall is where that butyl tape goes. And then the sidewall will engage the Z closure. It is attached to the wall with a threaded anchor screw at 16 inches on center through the butyl tape. It is also attached uh, to the Z closure using rivets, stainless steel rivets at 18 inches on center. After the sidewall is installed, we're gonna install the counter flashing. And the counter flashing is also set in 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape and attached to the wall using a threaded fastener at 24 inches on center. Remember, after we rivet everything, we're gonna remove all the swarf filings and debris from the area. Uh, we're gonna have minimum four inch lap on all flashings with approved sealant in the laps and a 24 inch minimum flashing length. Remember to stagger your flashings between your Z closure, sidewall, and counter flashings, a minimum of six inches. All right, I'll turn it over to you, Jason. You can show us what we have pre-built here. Okay, so here we are at the uh, sidewall mock-up. <clears throat> As you can see, we've already put in the underlayment uh, and the biggest fact is the underlayment is turning up the wall a minimum of three inches. And that includes, we have the head wall turned up right now too. Uh, you wanna make sure you're, you're gonna put a, a dog's ear into this corner. Do not cut the corner. We're trying to keep all the underlayment uh, as a one monolithic plane. Ice and water seal turns up the wall three inches. Your panels have been installed over the eave. Um, and now you've turned up your panel leg 90 degrees uh, per our detail just to provide support here against the sidewall flashing. Now the next thing to do is install our Z closure. <clears throat> and so we, uh, we have the Z closure here and I've marked it off uh, based off of our sidewall. Sidewall's four inches, so we, uh, you just wanna measure over from the wall four inches to the front edge of your Z closure, and that's where this is installed. Once again, your Z closure, we recommend pre-drilling at every four inches on center, and then I will finish the, the edges. And we also set this in the 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape. So we'll peel the paper, and we'll go ahead and set this in position. Once again, attached at four inches on center. Okay, now that our Z closure has been installed, it's time to install the actual sidewall. Once again, we've pre-drilled our sidewall uh, to attach at 16 inches on center. If this is sheetrock, you may be committed to where your studs are, so you'll have to find your stud for actual attachment. But once again, we put the butyl tape, 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape on the back. And we're gonna set this in place and engage it to the wall. Okay, we peel off our butyl tape, 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape, and we're gonna put this on the wall. Engages the Z closure. It's pressed in butyl tape, threaded fastener. 16 inches on center. And then we're 
attached to the wall. Okay, we're showing a four inch lap here with our sidewall flashing. Remember all four inch laps are set in sealant. And then we wanna make sure that these laps are staggered from our Z closure and our counter flashing. Six inch staggers. And remember on a Z closure, make sure it's lapped appropriately for water to flow down the face of the Z closure. So we're gonna apply a bit of sealant. And we finish off engaging our sidewall flashing. That is, once again, with the butyl tape and attached at 16 inches on center. And what you may notice now is that where the sidewall hits a headwall condition, we've tabbed that out one inch. One inch up, one inch over, to allow to uh, end dam the sidewall flashing. And now our headwall flashing will miter into that. All right, so sidewall's in place. Now we uh, rivet attachment at 18 inches on center with stainless steel pop rivet. Of course, now we have all the uh, uh, debris, so we'll need to get the panels cleaned off, uh, the, the debris removed, and then we'll put on the counter flash. Okay, so now we're ready to install the counter flashing. Once again, we've pre-drilled our holes for 24 inches on center. Uh, we've put on our 3 16 by 7 8 inch butyl tape, and we're ready to put that on the wall. And that gets attached using self-sealing threaded fasteners. Very important when you're using uh, threaded fasteners, self-sealing fasteners, you don't want to over compress that washer. Uh, so we cock it in, we, we cut the tube wide enough to fit into uh, the opening of the kick here so we get a nice a thick bead on top of this. We don't want it to bevel into there. So we'll just run it right here and just a nice bead on top. run your finger right down and tool it in. And there we go. That would be a completed sidewall detail. Please visit us on SheffieldMetals.com to look at this detail or any of our other details in our installation manual. Thank you.